Okay, so I'm gonna go over my, so I applied, was admitted and enrolled and attended the University of California Berkeley's uh, geophysics graduate program, specifically the PhD program. So this is the, there were a couple of, or a few areas where we had to submit information and one of the statements we had to submit was called a personal history statement. And so this is the personal history st statement, my p personal history statement that got me into the UC Berkeley geophysics graduate program, PhD program specifically. The personal history statement by Tannis Corley Leonardi. Growing up in my household, practical practicality was the name of the game. My parents each paid their way through college and the same was expected of my sister and I. In anticipation of this major expense, I started working at eight, the age of 14. When I turned 16, I started working two to three jobs and 40 hours a week. When I entered college, I worked between 40 and 60 hours a week during the school year and up to 100 hours a week during the summer to be able to afford tuition, housing, and food. At first, it was difficult getting accustomed to working full time and taking full college course loads, but I came to appreciate school in a way I was unable to fathom before. Having to work to help pay for my education drove me to find a field where work wouldn't feel like work, but instead a pursuit of my interests. The job I held from age, the ages of 14 to 20 was as a cleaner, lifeguard, swim instructor, slash swim coach. Through this job, I taught children from all neighborhoods of Seattle how to swim and interact with both youth and adults from multicultural backgrounds. One of the most life-changing experiences I had through this job was teaching children with autism and cerebral palsy how to swim. I was a little apprehensive prior to starting to teach these lessons because I had never thought of patience as one of my strengths. The very first day my student arrived and wouldn't even get in the water. Her parents seemed, seemed exasperated and made lots of excuses for her behavior. At the end of the first lesson, I had managed to get her to enter the pool on her own. After one year of working with this particular student, she was able to swim one length of the pool. Her parents were elated and started to cry because they hadn't thought their daughter was capable of swimming an entire length. I taught the student to swim, but what I learned from this experience is priceless. I helped her gain confidence in her sw swimming abilities, but she helped me gain confidence in myself. I had, hadn't believed I had the patience to teach an autistic student, but I learned that in fact I did. Typo here that said that in fact I did. When I transferred colleges, I had to leave the students I had taught for years behind, and that turned out to be the hardest part for me. But what made me realize the impact one person can have was when one student's parents came up to me and told me that I had made them believe their daughter was truly capable of anything if she had the right teacher. Simply by providing support and believing in someone when they do not believe in themselves can help change that person's outlook and help them accomplish that which they believe they are not capable of. When I took a position as a resident assistant, RA, at the University of Hawaii, I was placed in the freshman residence halls because the supervisors thought my life experiences would help me be a role model for students from all walks of life. While I had a diverse background of experiences prior to being an RA, I grew in many ways as a result of having the position. I learned how to remain truly unbiased when mediating roommate conflicts where the roommates despised each other so much that they felt at risk being in their rooms. Not only did I learn to remain unbiased, however, I also learned how to get at to get to the core of a conflict and diffuse the problem quickly. The roommates ended up living together for the rest of the year without conflict. I also learned to provide support to those going through death of family or friends, dealing with a pregnant girlfriend back home, and those who truly were unhappy with their major slash school choice. While at first working while going to school felt like a nuisance, I have since realized the invaluable experiences I have gained as a result. Each of these experiences helped me learn from people from different backgrounds, helped s some through personal hardships, and helped others find what it is that drives them. No matter the situation, however, there is one commonality between all humans. We need support. The support doesn't have to come from a family member. It could be an inspirational teacher or the resident assistant living at the end of the hall. But at the end of the day, we need to believe in ourselves. 
When that confidence does not exist or needs reinforcement, I have learned the best action to take is to be supportive. While I have remained active in my community through participation in my current residence hall council and clubs, I miss helping others recognize and achieve their potential and teaching slash mentoring others is something I plan on pursuing in graduate school.